I'm doing this video to debunk the naysayers out there that tell me that I don't know what I'm doing. You know who you guys are. You're the guys that take exception to bypassing a single LED on a television telling me that it won't last and that is absolute crap, it will. So I'm gonna start this off just showing some videos I did and when I did them so you can see when these videos were published. These are TVs and LED lights that I have uh, repaired. As you can see, this Samsung TV was done six years ago. It's my set. I'm still running it today. Six years later, I'll show you the TV near the end of the video. It's working perfect. But this one here had a bed LED that was going out. Initially, they didn't want to fix it, but they ended up giving it to me. So apart comes the screen. Here's our array of LEDs. And testing with the meter, there's the bad LED on this one that we're going to bypass. Jumper wire in place. Going to reassemble this set. Now remember, this is five years ago, and I still have this TV, and it runs constantly. And here's the set after reassembly. Everything's looking good. And one more that I found in the dumpster. This one's running 24 hours a day, has been going for six months since I fixed this one. And of course we recognize this, this is exactly the same as the Hisense TV under the RCA brand. Yes, it's a backlight failure on this one. This one has three strips of LEDs in the set, it's a little smaller TV. And one of them is dead. Identify one LED up in the upper corner that's gone open, and we're going to bridge this one out. So basically I'm just going to put a solder bridge right across there, that's the two runs of copper that go down to that dead LED and then I can power the TV up and all the LEDs now work. Time to put this set back together and I'm going to show you guys this set because it's still running right now. This one sits in my house running 24 hours a day and it has been since the day that I fixed this set up. There's the set working on the bench. You don't even notice the dark spot on the upper corner. Here's the one uh, LED light bulb that I fixed eight years ago, and I'm going to show you these lights because I'm still using them. This is an expensive Philips, died eight years ago, still functional today, one LED died. So this was the bulb that failed after only a couple of years. Here's the substrate inside with all the LEDs and resistors and so forth and circuitry mounted on it. One of these LEDs went bad. I'm just doing a demonstration here, shining a blue light on it so you can see the phosphorus blue glow. Because um, white LEDs, as we all know, is, are really blue LEDs which is yellow phosphorus. And this is one that's actually started to turn blue, by the way. Measuring with the meter, I found that one LED was shot. So I just put a blob of solder over top of it. I'm going to get this light and show you guys. Just, I just want to prove. This is to prove to the people out there that say if you jumper one LED, the others are the same age and they're going to fail. Because that's not true. I'm tired of defending the fact that I've bridged LEDs on televisions. And having the know-it-alls out there tell me that this is not doing it right. That the others are going to fail. Because that's simply not true. Here's the lamp running with the removed LED. And I'm going to go get this light. And we're going to take a look at it momentarily and another one that I've just done as well to show you that they are still functional. So this was installed in 2009 when this set was installed as you can see. And it failed a few years later and this is eight years ago I replaced or, or did this and this one is still going strong and this light gets about five to six hours a use Per day. And here's one more. This one was done five months ago, but again, this light here is used in a hallway and it's running constantly and it's going strong after just bypassing the one LED that was dead. And incidentally, these weren't cheap ones. This was a Philips bulb. I had a little bit of a time getting into this one to bypass the dead LED. If we take a look here, we can see the one that's blown. You can see the black spot on it right there. So I'm going to bust this one out put a bridge over it and get this light back in service. This is one of the many free 
LEDs that I've got over the years because uh, my wife works with a lot of seniors and stuff and when bulbs pop she changes them and brings them home to take them to recycling and I end up going through the the pile of dead bulbs and pull them apart and fix them and give them back to her and say here take this back to your client or I put them in service but what, what I'm getting at is years down the road they're all still working so when people say well you, you can't just change one because uh, the rest of them are the same age and they're going to fail well that's complete nonsense because the reason these fail in the first place is because they were defective at time of manufacture so like the last one I'm just going to put a bridge over top of where the defective LED was removed and that will fix it and there it is the light is fully functional I'll show you these lights because a couple of these I've got still in the house here that I'm using on a regular basis so there's the Philips bulb I did eight years ago still burning bright and this thing here as I say runs pretty much all night and sometimes all day it's over my sink and it's basically used as a night light this thing runs constantly now I know the naysayers out there are going to try to say well that's not the same light you could just be showing us any light so I'm going to remove the top from this one this is the one that I just showed you in my kitchen there's the top and let's see the dead LED that was in here it's right there oh you guys can't see it because it's lit up okay well let me turn it out then so you can see it there you see this spot where the solder is eight years ago this was done and the rest of them are all working just fine now in your TV it's exactly the same as this okay these are the same type of LEDs that are in a TV except for they got a lens over them and they're on a strip instead of a metal back plate but the technology is exactly the same eight years this is the first one I did. This is the first bulb that I did eight years ago when that one failed. Incidentally, this is the difference between a Philips bulb eight years ago and I don't know what this one here is. Luminous, is it? Globe. This is one I use on my bench for my, my bench lighting. But this is the difference in the way that they used to make them as to how they make them today, this style, with the big capacitor in the middle. That's probably to keep the cap cool because this one here capacitor would be in the base but anyway that's the difference between the two of them I don't run it with the top on it just because I, I want more uh, directional light so I run this one this is the one that sits over my bench and that I use when I'm working on equipment but here's something interesting watch this so this bulb does not have as many hours on it as this one because this one runs like constantly this thing runs every day for five to six hours I would say every single day this one here only runs when I'm actually shooting stuff in here look at the light look at the color temperature I'm gonna screw this other one in this one has turned more predominantly blue than this one but they both started out as the same color temperature predominantly more blue than the other one if I turn on I'll kill the, the house lights so that we're only looking at the light from this one and I have a second light over here on the other side of the bench. So this is uh, the one I'm going to turn on is identical to this. Um, so here's the here's the one that's turning blue. And if I turn it off and turn on the other one, you notice the difference in the you notice the difference in the light. Look at look at the skin tone here, right? And now when I switch over to this one, look at the skin tone here. In fact, if I put them both on, you'll probably notice the difference. The light is shifting this one is becoming more blue see that move my hand look at the look at the skin tone change this light is becoming more blue over time even though they both are the same color temperature and they both started out at the same at the same time they were the same color temperature but this one has become noticeably more blue over the years and if I turn on all the lights in my kitchen, all the lights in my kitchen are the same as this. They're all the same light. Okay. This one's a different brand. This is a globe, but all my lights in my kitchen are all Philips. If I turn them all on, you'll see the difference. Actually, here's a perfect way to illustrate the LED aging. Notice the light hitting the wall. 
These are both Philips lights. They are exactly the same brand. They came out of the same package. I bought six of them when I upgraded the lights in the kitchen. And they were like, I don't know, 20, 20 bucks a piece or something. They were ridiculous, but I upgraded these, I think, well, I think I showed in the video when I got it, 2008 maybe. So they're, you know, they're old, but this one, this one here is the one that failed. And I had to, uh, oh, like some dust up there. I had to uh, short the LED out that failed. But as you can see, this one runs many, many, many more hours. The other ones only really run if we're cooking something in here, and sometimes they don't even run when we're doing that. But this one light here, where it's gone more blue, this one has many, many, many more hours because it typically runs you know, three to five hours every day, I would say, this one. The other ones only run for perhaps an hour a day, if that. So they've aged, and as you can see, the color is certainly shifting, which is what happens with LEDs because the, the yellow phosphorus an LED, as I've explained before, is really a blue diode with yellow phosphorus. And the yellow phosphorus, as it ages, puts out less light and allows the blue light to overpower the yellow and the lights start to turn blue. And the same thing happens on TVs. Although they tend to age a little faster on TVs because they're running them so hot. But I've seen TVs that have a really blue picture just due to the LEDs aging. Speaking of TVs, this is the TV that I did uh, eight years ago, the Samsung the LEDs that were bad on it. Oh look, YouTube's giving me low resolution. What else is new? Uh, the commercial came through in 1080p and the video is playing in 360. What's going on with this? Anyway, this is the set I did eight years, the, the set I'm showing is the Hisense set I just fixed that everyone's squawking about not changing all the LEDs on. This is the Samsung that I did the LEDs on and I've still got the set and it still gets used and it gets used almost every day, so Hogwash to those that say that if you bridge one that the others are going to fail Because if you turn the backlights down Don't run them up at full They'll last a long time Anyway, that's about it for my little rant For the critics of jumpering LEDs Or should I say trolls? You know where I think you guys can go, right? You can take a long walk on a short pier as far as I'm concerned Here's the RCA TV that the LED in the top left corner was bypassed in. This one's been running for over six months, 24 hours a day. And none of the others have gone bad. Working perfectly. And here's that other LED that I bridged the dead LED in. It's in a hallway and again it runs for hours every day, going strong. This one's only been six months. But eight years from now, this one will also be still running. And again, for those that don't believe it, there's the damage I did getting into the bulb. We'll pull the top off again so you guys can see the LED that was bridged. Because I know if you don't see it, you don't believe it. There it is. There's the uh, dead LED there that was chopped out on this one. And of course it's a Phillips. There's where I got into it right there. Anyway, for you critics that suggest that the LEDs are going to fail right after one after another, that's not the case. Can they fail? Sure, another one can fail. But I could replace all the LEDs with new LEDs and have exactly the same problem because it's a manufacturing defect. So you could replace all the LEDs and one could fail six months down the road. Just like another one of these could fail down the road. There's no guarantees in life as to how long LEDs are gonna last. They're all made the same way, but defects do happen and they don't catch them at the factory because they might not fail for six months or a year or a year and a half or two. But when they're defective at manufacture, they will fail prematurely, but the rest of them could be fine for the rest of the life of the product. That's why I do it this way. I give every customer the option. This is what it's going to cost to bypass the one LED. This is what it's going to cost to change the strips. And no, changing the strips is not going to guarantee any longer longevity because, hey, they were new when the set was new. 
and one failed. I could put all new LEDs in and we could be in the same boat a year and a half down the road with one of the new ones failing. Just as likely as one of the old ones failing. Anyway, that's my rant on this for all you guys out there that are being critical. You know what? You have no idea what you're talking about. Absolutely none. Thanks for watching.